won the forthcoming governorship elections in Lagos, the deputy governorship candidate of the ruling APC, Dr. Kadri Obafemi Hamzat, joins us now. We look forward, we look backwards, and we hope to see a great Nigeria. Good morning. It's a pleasure to have you on the show. Thank Good you for morning joining for us. So we're going to get right into it. I was going to ask you this question a bit later on, but seeing as we've just been watching the scenes, it's important that we, you know, put a little bit of context. Now, you were initially one of the three candidates vying for the gubernatorial ticket from the APC. There was, of course, you, the current governor, Akinwoma Ambode, and, of course, Babajide Somwondu. Now, interestingly enough, of course, Babajide Somwondu, he, he emerged the victor. You're now his running mate. Now, we saw scenes yesterday that you have officially been endorsed by the current governor of Lagos State. Now, we understand there was a little bit of friction to start off with. What is the current situation with you guys now, and how did it feel to actually officially be endorsed by the current governor of Lagos State? Well, you know, primaries are supposed to be challenging for the parties. Yeah. It's, it's unique that we, uh, the, sitting governor of the, part of the, the sitting governor of the state is challenged. But, so apparently, initially, there was friction. But we understand that, you know, you can't have democracy without Democrats. So Indeed. that's the essence. The constitution of the country says four years, and that is renewable. And parties, candidates can come out from various parties. So that was what happened. It's part of the democr democratic credentials yes. that we must build as a nation. Of course. And we all come together. And it's not just in the gubernatorial in the House of Reps, Assembly, and every, in the, all this charter of the political spectrum. So uh, as a party, we've come together and realized that it's better for us to work as a team to keep moving Lagos forward rather than fighting ourselves internally. And that's what happened. Interestingly enough, when we look at you in particular, you come from an incredibly strong political background. In fact, you have what we call a war chest. You know, you've been war commissioner. In, <laughs> that is correct. That is what we call it. Because when you, when you know, they call it the theatre of war politics when you look at it. Now, you've, all, you've been the commissioner of science and technology. You've been the commissioner of works and infrastructure. Your father was also the commissioner of transport for Lagos. So you come, you come from what we call a proper, proper, proper political family. Was there any friction when you realized that you weren't the candidate? Because, you know, some people felt that you were better suited to be in the governorship candidate for the APC. How did you take it when the decision was made? Well, the if you notice very well, I actually stepped down from Mr. Sonwodi yes. before the primaries. And right you know, before the primaries. There are various things that you have to consider in, in governance. Um, there can only be one governorship candidate, and that's the reality. And then. And there are different dynamics. You have to look at sections of the state. You have to, in our country, you have to look at religion. That's where we are as a nation. You have to look at different parts of the state. And therefore, when we look at all that, I realize that it's better for me to step down from Mr. Sanwolu. I believe, honestly, I've known him for 15 years. Why? With, well, I'm just explaining. I've known him for 15 years. He's, uh, I see, he's my friend. I see him as a very strong person that has the interest of state, the Lagos State at heart. Do you remember? I was offered the deputy governorship candidate four years ago. I said no. So for me to take it is because I'm comfortable with him. I believe that together we can do a good job. And I, I honestly believe that we can take the state higher from where it is today. Go right ahead. Now, Dr. Dr. Hamzat, you have remained a key figure in Lagos State, in the Lagos State government. You've been responsible for, you know, very interesting frameworks that you've set up, including the uh, Lagos State regi Residence Registration, a bit like the Social Security that we have in the United States, and also the Forensic Lab, which I believe is the first of its kind, which, you know, is there to enhance our criminal investigation programs, which is great. Now, what I want to ask you is that because Lagos State, including myself and Lagos State other residents and workers, have high expectations of your government. I want to focus on the area of water and the area of mental health. Now, does your government plan to finish the construction of the Adyar water plant, um, which, which started under Governor Fashola and wasn't completed by Governor Ambode? Um, and I also want to know, you know, it's a 70 billion naira project. Do you have plans of completing that in your administration? Um, and secondly, um, the health care. Now, Lagos State has hired less than 20 psychiatrists um, working for them now. now. And there are plenty of people that are in need of psychological management. And mental health remains a key issue in the state and the country at large. What plans do you have for both of these uh, sectors? So let's take the water. Uh, I was a commissioner that awarded that contract. The Adion. It's supposed to be a 70 million gallons uh, water, water facility. It was awarded to a company called Salini. 
On a Sunday, because I normally visit on a Sunday, on a Sunday you have minimum 714 people working. So on a regular day, it's usually more than that. So it, first of all, it creates jobs. And then we have, the, you know when the first one was built? It was built a long time ago. It was before independence. And then it was piped all the way from Uju to Ikoyi to VI. So the people living in the area don't actually have the water. And then all those pipings are old. Now, the essence is that we feed 3 million people, about 287,000 houses. But you mentioned the 70 billion. That's actually the water itself, the, the foundation, yeah. the facility. But the reticulation is another 60 billion. Because you know you must now pipe it to people's houses and so on and so on. So it's, it's expensive. But the reality is we know it's expensive. It's not a one-year project. And as such, within a three-year span, we should be able to finish that project. So that will be completed it's a under priority. Your, under Water, your it's priority because it ties into health. And I'm happy you mentioned uh, health generally today, Lagos State Government today, I was just coming from that program, we're doing health insurance scheme. It's been under pilot for a long time. The reality is we cannot continue to buy health like we buy yam and rice, go to the market. So the biggest problem for, for us is that, you know, we use out of pocket most of the time. So a lot of people are one sickness away from poverty. They get sick and then they have to spend everything that they have. Some people sell. So we first of all need to tackle that foundation. So if you have a pool of people that have insurance, it brings in a lot of resources. Now, you spoke about 20 Socrates. The reality is how many Socrates are actually in Nigeria being trained? So we, are, we have to look at the fund exactly. So we don't have enough. But that, that's as a result of an, a huge amount of a brain drain of, of exactly. medical students and exactly. medical practitioners that yeah. are leaving the country. Yeah. So yeah. Why, why isn't that being tackled? Why is there only 20 hired in the, the whole of Lagos State? Well, you know, it's difficult. Let's be realistic. You know, I, I finished, I did my PhD in 1992 and I went to the United States. I didn't stay here. Yes. Um, you mentioned the fact that my father, because my father was always arrested by uh, the uh, bachelor regime then. So I don't want to be arrested. So I left. So, and, you know, I came back after some time. So, and that's the situation. We have a cycle where, over the time, because of various reasons, people left the country. But now we have to tackle, and that's why we talk about restructuring the country. The reality today is the budget of Lagos State today is about $2.5 billion. That's just the budget of Fire Department of New York City. So New York City has a population of about 11 million. We are 22 million. So we need to grow our economy in the state. That's the only way we can do other things. You know, people have said education should be 25%, health should be 15%. So if you look at it, what do you have for infrastructure? So that basket must be big enough. So until our budget gets to like 10, 15 billion dollars, then you know, we're, we're, and that's what we, let's grow the economy. Make sure that we have more resources. That's the only way we can do water, do this. If not, we are just joking. Now, it was also during your tenure as Commissioner for Science and Technology that you actually enforced the application, as we know, of modern technology in the straits ministries, as you said, you know, that thereby changing the face of data and record keeping in the state, and at the same time, eliminating the very important trend of ghost workers. As we know, that has been a massive strain on the budget. There's so, 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 so many ghost workers that have been in the ministry, thankfully, due to technology such as the ones that you involved, that has been eliminated. Now, apparently, that, that was the single act that was largely responsible for your elevation as a commissioner for works and infrastructure. Now, the question I have to ask you is, here in 2018, we're actually about to enter 2019, you were the commissioner for science and technology in 2005, if I'm correct. Mm -hmm. How can technology help us in Lagos State? Because right now, infrastructure is a challenge that we're facing. You are also the commissioner for works and infrastructure, so this is something that you understand quite well. A few people have said that we are lagging behind the times and we're approximately 10 to 12 years behind, you know, mm -hmm. behind the developed world. I don't know if I agree with that, but I do know that technology <coughs> is the future and we do need to employ some more technology in Lagos State. So what kind of techn technological advancements do we need to make as a state in order to push us forward? Well, you know, for me, I think the difference between us and the developed world is technology and the rule of law. Technology have, and the rule of law. If we have those two, and really, even the rule of law is a subset of technology because you don't see police running after people in other parts of the That's world. That's correct. Exactly. So with technology, you can do. Now, it's very straightforward. We have to dig really deep on technology. And the good thing is government really don't have to do much. In Lagos today, we have about 500 tech startups right now in Lagos. 
In fact, it's stated that we have the biggest now in Africa, bigger than Johannesburg, Nairobi, and the rest. So we have all these young people. And interestingly, we went to a school in Ikorodu, and young kids are being taught how to code. Code, yes. In fact, the reality is, when we were <laughs> when we were in the university, our computer room is bigger than this old building. So we have we we'll use only Fortran. But today, the kids are doing all sorts of fantastic. So what we need, what we plan to do is to have incubation centers okay. in all the fifty seven local government and LCDs, and have you know partner with the private sector so that we can have the last mile in terms of the broadband. We have the broadband in Lagos today. We have the main one, we have the glow and the rest. But the question is, how do people get it to their offices, to their houses, and so on and so forth? So which means we, we've prevented people from actually breaking our roads. Because you, know, you don't want to solve a problem and create another one. Yes. So all the new roads in Lagos from 2008, they have docks. Yeah. Part of the biggest challenge we have with the telcos and the rest is co-location. So people don't want to share that dot. Yeah. But we are saying you can't break the road if the docks are already there. So we have the manhole, remove the manhole, put in your docks, and then you are good to go. So basically for us is to uh, uh, you know, help the telcos so that they can actually use our facilities to actually let the, the, the broadband get to people. The moment that child in Agege has broadband and internet access, it can compete any child now, anywhere. Dr. Hamza, I'm sorry I must interject because you've actually led into my next question, speaking about the child in Agege. Now, one of the issues that we have here in Lagos is the problem of education. Now, I have some figures here. Now, it, for the for YEC results, we reached an all-time high in 2016 with a pass rate of 52.97%. That then improved in 2017 with 15.22%. In 2018, unfortunately, it has gone down to 49.98%. Now, let me give you some context. We have less endowed states such as Abia with a pass rate of 81% in 2016, River State with 78%, Edo State with 77%, and Imo State with 76%. Mm. Now, considering that Lagos has over 22 million people and we, and we generate over 30 billion naira a month, I don't think enough is being done to actually target the education system because there's one thing to have incubation centers and all this technology, but we need to have youth who can actually use them. Mm. So, what do you plan? What do you and your primary, of course, your principal, no, I, I plan think to that, do about the education? I think it's important to understand the, the premises. See, Lagos State, for example, we pay YAC fees. Yes. So, when people come into public school, you pay YAC fees. You know what happens? you see that every year there is a jump in transfer from other states. So a lot of the kids are not actually students that actually went to school from here, but people want to benefit from the free payment. So, and the, the so what you're saying is that our results are being lowered by a transplantation of people exa from other exactly, states. Exactly, exactly. Now, and that's not the, you know, a lot of policy actually came out from that. Let me give you an example. I was in a school in Tolu complex, about a lot of schools in that complex. And one of the teachers, you know, we were buying free books. We have all the furnitures. And one of the teachers told me that, listen, these kids won't make it. And I said, are you, are you, are you for real? He said, because these are the kids that actually go and hawk on the street in the evening. That's why in 2014, we actually say no more hawking. Oh, and the various people said, no, they are doing business. But that was because we said, look, because some of these kids, the promise that people make to their parents is, okay, we give them education, but they don't care what has happened. So after school, some of these kids will go and hawk. They can't make it. That's the reality. So that's why we said no. And that's why we introduced a lot of other things, that there must be parents teacher association. If you don't come as a parent, 50%, then we won't let your child... I mean, so, I understand everything you've said, but yes. honestly, I don't necessarily <laughs> think you've answered my question. I still think a lot more is left to be done about the education system here in Lagos. You are right. We always need to do so, a lot so more. So what, what, what are we planning to do? Because the reason I ask this, we have just under two months until the presidential elections mm -hmm. in February. Mm -hmm. APC is a ruling party. We mm -hmm. have just over three months until March the 2nd of the governorship elections yes, in Lagos. Yes. You know, your constituency need to understand, and we really need to feel that things are being done. So I would love to hear, you know, some policies about uh, what no, we no, can you see, do the problem is education. That, no, no, you see, look, every time we talk about education, people will say, oh, your budget must be 25%. It's not about money. The reality today... It's not just about it's, money. It's just not about money. Yes. It's not throwing... Money doesn't always solve all the problems. Now, the challenge is today, if you actually aggregate per child, public school ch children... Spend, we spend more money on public schools than private schools today. So why are we getting what results? Now, 10% of the children come to school hungry. 
You can't. So you have to look at. I'm saying there are soft issues yes. that we really need to tackle. It's not enough to just put somebody uh, education or whatever content in a child's brain. That child must be well taken care of. What happens to them when they get out of class? What happens to them before they come to school? So those. Are, so we must feed these children. It's important. If you if you are hungry, you cannot be educated. That's and that's the true. bottom line. That's so I'm saying point. that there are so stomach many issues. So that is still the challenge. Exactly. We it's, still it's, live it's in important. The it's very important. And then we must also make sure that no child sits on the floor. And one of the mm. problems we found out is that a lot of the teachers, say, for example, live in Ekorodu and yeah. teaches in Moshi. So it takes two, three hours to get to school. So one of the things we must try to do is how do we rationalize and make sure that teachers as much as possible, stay very close to where they live. So these are the fundamental issues. It's not just building more classes. I'm not saying we shouldn't build more classes, but let's look at the real problem. Why is this happening? Why is it that our children are not doing well? It's because of the various soft issues that we must look at. And what we did was to have consultants that actually went out there to look at all these studies and say, these are the things you must do first before you actually actually put content in the, in the hands of the children. Now, Dr. Hamza, I want to move back onto your political campaign and the ongoing campaigns across Lagos State now. Now, we saw a, li a little amount of violence in Oshun and Ekiti State during their elections. Now, this year, there's, there's apprehensions that there will be violence in Lagos State because there's allegedly been a lot of destruction of your opponent, Jimmy Agbaje's posters across the state. Now, is there going to be violence? And what does your party do to, you know, what are their plans to curb that from happening? Well, first of all, I think we must understand. You, my understanding is you cannot just put your poster anywhere. There's an agency yeah, that regulates exactly. So there are rules. So some of these. But your, posts, your candidate, someone, your you know, your running mate, someone whose posters are across. Everywhere. I mean, I, I, I was under the impression literally. he was the only candidate. No, no, but, uh, but you have approval. That's what I'm saying. You're you, including your posters as well. Yeah, we everywhere. must have approval. We, you have, we have approval. You must have written. Now, if you look at Todd Mainland, for example, you see is, those is polls. It's with some world lead posters. No, well, Mr. Agbaje is there too. We're on the polls. But those polls were already concession to some people. So it's a company. It's their poll. They, they are paying Lassa, everybody, for it. So you just, just cannot put your things there. So you notice that on that, we actually tie our own on the concrete, not on the polls. So the people that are paid for the poll, they have the right to go and remove it. But because it is there. So that is the challenge. I have to say, though, Dr. Hamza, it yes. is said that there are people from your party. Yeah. We did. There's been a video that's been circulating since yesterday of a particular person destroying some Jimmy Agbaje posters. Mm. That's been said that this particular individual is from the APC. Mm. So there's now there's a bit of a worry now because we're worried about the potential of violence and the possibility look, look, of violence during the election. If you drive around Maryland, our posters were destroyed. So it happens every time. But you accept and it's that not... third mainland bridge is a major route for many Lagosians on and a daily why, that, basis. That's why exactly I explained to you. So shouldn't there be an equal amount of... Uh, is, it's not a question of equal. It's a question of following the rules. So the rules are there. Go and get your approval that I'm using A, B, C, D. That's it. The moment you have your approval, it, it, it's like saying because I'm homeless, I can just go and live anywhere. No. You must pay your rent. You must have a lease. So that's it, it, the same thing. It's a space. And therefore, there are, there are rules that people must follow. So the challenge is, are we all following the rules? Now, so we must follow the rules. Another That's issue that is very contentious to residents of Lagos State is the traffic. I mean, we can all attest to the amount of traffic mm. that we face on a daily basis. Mm. LASMA, BRT, mm. you know, so many different avenues of transportation are not as effective as mm. they should be. Mm. What are your plans for alternative transportation mm. and the current gridlock across the whole state? It is yeah. it's unacceptable. Yeah, it is. Well, the, you, the, the, the Lagos State is 0.4% of the landmass of Nigeria, OK? Um, we have the largest population. So it's not like Niger State that is about 8%. So Niger State is this, twice the size of the whole of Southeast. Therefore, the traffic moves better. Now, it's not an excuse, but we have, we've noticed that we have 51 grid lo locations in, in Lagos. So things have to happen. In some cases, it's just traffic light. In some cases, reduction of the roundabout. Well, what about alternative transportation? Well, there will be, but, you know, it's, uh, for example, we're building the rail. We just need to finish it. We've been oh, hearing cool. about this it's railway for a no, while. You... Do we actually have any dates of when this can be ready? Because at the end of the day, as you've just said, traffic is a serious it's a, it's issue It's a question here. of it's money. A it's a question of you money. You will notice that there is no sub-sovereign around the world. No sub-sovereign around the world, right? 
that builds without federal intervention. No, so, no, nowhere. That leads so, me to my next question, actually, as the, as the former commissioner. No, the traffic, the traffic is important. I it really is, need to it address is, it. It, it is an issue, yes. so please. So the, the, the challenge is, will we finish the rail? There are, there are certain situations, because we have agreement with CCECC, but because of the recession at that time, you know, unfortunately, what they can bring in sort of reduce. But you see, the biggest challenge is also you are crossing the water. Yes. Now, you will notice the logistics. Look at all the equipment on there just to do the pilot. It goes down 93 meters. So there are certain areas where there can be friction. So you have to stop because people's life could be at risk when they are doing those things. Okay. So when they measure and they realize that no friction, they have to stop a week or two. So it's more of engineering. But that's the difficult part. The moment they get to Marina, going to Kokomaiko is on land. So it's just laying. So we have to make sure that the difficult one is done. And you know, you are carrying millions of people. It must be done right. There are far too it many people right. on the road. We do have, we have far too many cars not on the road at this moment in time. And that's why public transport, a viable public transportation system is imperative. Now, interestingly enough, one of the things that's contributed to the current gridlock on the road is the state of our roads. Yeah. And now, as the former Commissioner for Works and Infrastructure, mm -hmm. this is something that you understand quite well. <laughs> now, one of the questions that I do have to ask you is that, Legot, the federal government is the one that is meant to really be involved in the roadworks. As I understand, the federal there, there has been no there's been no no budget from the federal government. Lagos State has literally been covering everything themselves, as I've, as I've understood. Now, how do we how do we get the federal government to really put in a little bit more budget into Lagos State right now? Because the roads are terrible. Well, that has changed. That has changed. You know, I was a special advisor to the Honourable Minister for Power yes. Works, and so I know that has changed in the past two three years. Now, what has happened before was, for example, in 2014, the budget of the Federal Ministry of Works was just 20 billion. In Lagos alone, I was commissioner then for works, our budget was 78 billion. So you can see the difference. To cover the whole country was 20 billion, Lagos alone was. So, but that has changed now. So we you notice that federal government has awarded the Badagri to semi port. Now, but the challenge is that we have to make sure that we finish some roads that we've started. Now, the biggest problem they have on Badagri was compensation. Um, and the amount of sand that you require in that area. So to, to build that road, you need 1.2 million cubic meters of sand. That's about 400,000 tipas of sand. It's a lot. But why do you have so many abandoned projects? Because I, I, the, no, I'm not in government state, now, so it's no, difficult know, for me to. No, I know, I know, I know. You're no longer in government. You know, potentially you might just be about to enter government. Yes. And this is the question that we ask. There are far too many abandoned projects here in Lagos. Yeah, namely, Illibri, yes, the Illibri, um estate as well. Yeah. The housing estate. Yeah, estate. Yeah, I know, I know. The adding yeah. of water plant, like yeah. I mentioned yeah, earlier. Yeah. And also, just adding on to what my colleague Mercy has said about the roads, articulated trucks are one of the biggest problems. Yeah, Gigi Road. No, how, the, 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 for the transport, you know, look. How we sure your, your incoming government, mm. hopefully, um, and, and maybe not, but how we sure that they won't abandon projects too? No, 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 look, the, the reality is, like I said, a lot of those projects were started by our government, but the reality is that when we finish them, they are important for us. I think the priorities of government for some reason changed, and they thought that they can come back and do them, but it is the way it is. But for us... We will fit. All those housing projects were started. I was the commissioner that started it. So I know, I understand the policies and the politics behind it. So it's important for us, and we will finish them. In terms of the articulated trucks, the, our challenge, our challenge is our port. That port was built to service 3 million people. Now the, the, our port, we, can, we are now 20 million people. Everywhere around the world, the port is usually responsible for a 20-kilometer radius in terms of road maintenance. That is not happening here. But that's not an excuse. The reality is the port cannot process enough, uh, enough of those trucks today. So what happens is because the pipelines are now damaged, so most trucks cannot go to Mosimi, they can't go to Shagam to go and get everybody's going to. But what we will do is we will we, we move them. We've moved them before. There are, we've identified some land in the Janiki. It requires compiling whatever, whatever, that can take about 3,000 trucks. We move them there. And as they call them from the port, they can go over. So we will talk to the various companies, the Dangote, the flour mills, and the rest, so that we have an agreement on how to do this thing. But uh, those trucks cannot stay on our roads. It's just, they are not parking lots. So they must now, I just wanted to ask, sorry, no, just, no, no, I just wanted to ask about, 
your forensic lab because mm. I believe that's the first of its kind in Lagos State and in Nigeria mm. at large and it's and it's to do in with West Africa. in West Africa <laughs> we're more kudos to you and I, I think it's to do a lot with tracking down criminals now we have at the moment a very high rate of sexual violence gender-based violence and um, how is that being implemented in in that because I think it's a great idea but mm -hmm. how effectively are we using it no you know the essence for us is to get the evidence uh, you still have to do work with the police at the time we started it, we realized we have only one, one fingerprint analyst in the Nigerian police. Only one fingerprint analyst. So, and if you have only one analyst, you know, it, it doesn't, it doesn't call it. So basically, when we started, we worked with the police to make sure they recruit more, train them more. As a matter of fact, we sent some people then to Contico in Virginia. That's the F FBI lab. So, it's it, it still, we, we, get the, we get the evidence, but we have to work with the police because the police that we recruit, that we do all, what, all this that is necessary in terms of prosecution. It's not the Ghost State Government. But what we've done is to provide the facility so that the police can use it. So it's for the DPP and everybody to get all the evidences. But before, when, the, when Dana crashed, we couldn't do DNA here. We have to send the bodies all the way to South Africa and the United States and England. So the essence is we should be able to do it here. And that's why we put it there. Now, there's clearly a correlation between criminal activity and employment. So let's talk about the unemployment rates here in Lagos. Now, at the end of last quarter, 2017, the unemployment rate went up to 18.5%. Now, these rates are really high, especially considering that Lagos State is a, is a congested state. We have a high large population here there's a lot of people here so those numbers just aren't good enough mm. now as you're seeing we we're seeing the evidence we're seeing the effects of this right now so what has been done to tackle the unemployment rate here in Lagos? you know the first thing that i said because was, as the unemployment rate goes up so does the criminal so does criminal mm, activity absolutely absolutely you know one of the first thing that i said was how do we go the basket to make sure that everybody has access you know 80% of our GDP is actually private sector. It's not government. Government can't employ everybody. That's why the, 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 the employment fund is there yes. to assist the SMEs. Okay, I'm so sorry, we don't. Oh, no, please, please continue. So, please continue. The, the to, uh, to assist the SME, because it's those small, small companies, so those small, small agencies that can actually employ a lot more. It's for us to make it easier for businesses to grow. And as such, for example, if you look at some of the industrial ops, part of our discussion with discos is how do we get them powers? So that if we get them electricity, they can employ more people and try to grow. 80%, like I said, of GDP of Lagos is in the private sector. So we must grow that private sector so that they can actually help us to employ a lot more people. Dr. Hamzad, it's been a pleasure on the show. You spoke very well. I have to say that your principal, Babajida Sawanlu, said that it is not time to be complacent. So it's really, really important that you're not complacent. On behalf of the Nigerians, I would like to say that, yes, please, we're, we're looking forward to good governance. Best of luck. And it's so important that we are not complacent. Thank Dr. Obafemi Hamzad. Thank you for Deputy joining us. Thank you. Governorship for the APC. Thank you so much for joining us.